All right, so first, a little bit of a disclaimer. Part of the reason it took me a while to get this video out is, if you saw one of my previous videos, I encountered some pretty significant crashing and freezing inside of zombies. And it was really irritating, got to the point where, like in this run, I had just gotten the grenade launcher upgraded where I needed it to, and it froze. Here, I was about to get it upgraded where I needed it to, and once again, it froze. Um, hopefully this doesn't happen to you. It did happen to me, uh, but if it doesn't, then you should be able to knock this out in a couple of hours in one game. Um, so here are the challenges you have to do. The ballistic knife is 300 enemies using a special or melee that is epic or legendary, and the crossbow is using a special weapon that has been packet punched at least twice, kill 50 special enemies. So the reason you can piggyback these is if you get a epic uh, or higher special weapon, you can use it to kill normal and special enemies, and it will count towards both of these challenges once you get it pack a punched twice. So this gameplay is going to explain to you kind of how this works, as well as walk you through uh, a gameplay beginning to end where I did it. I had already made some progress in these challenges because of the aforementioned freezes. Um, but that said, if you do what I'm going to describe, then you will be able to do it in a single game of zombies by going probably no further than World 4. Um, and should have be able to do it in just a couple of hours. So first thing I would recommend, um, you need to take the M79 grenade launcher for this as your loadout weapon because it is a special weapon. Um, so you will be using it to satisfy um, both of these requirements. You don't want to use a melee weapon um, and you're going to have to get it pack a punch. So the first thing that I would recommend doing is going and getting a weapon from the mystery box just because you're not going to want to use the grenade launcher early on for everything because it doesn't actually count towards those challenges until you get it either Pack-a-Punch level 2 or Epic level or both. Um, so I would just basically be open-minded to picking up whatever the best ground drop uh, or mystery box loot is you can get. So shotguns are, are good. Um, here after this I found a, a gallow in a box and then I believe after this dragon relic it dropped a hower so I picked that up. But <clears throat> Let's just talk about uh, kind of the, the tactic here. The idea is to get enough resources, money, and salvage to get your grenade launcher upgraded to epic level and to pack a punch level two. So, pack a punch level one is 5,000, level two is 15,000. So, to get the grenade launcher to pack a punch level two, where you're going to need it, you'll need $20,000. Um, which is not going to be a big deal. What's more difficult is getting the salvage necessary to upgrade it to epic level. It takes 500 uh, normal salvage for level 1. It takes another 1,000 normal salvage for level 2, which is 1,500 total. And then it takes, I believe, 500 rare salvage to get it to epic level, which is the part that will be the biggest grind. So the technique that I'm going to explain to you um, given the Season 3 update, should work pretty well, assuming you get decently lucky. Otherwise, you'll just have to kind of do a little bit of extra grinding for rare salvage. So make sure you always pick it up when you get it. Um, but otherwise, here's what I'm going to describe. First is whatever weapon you ended up either getting out of the mystery box or, you know, on level 1, you don't really need a pack-a-punch weapon. You don't really need... Uh, a weapon to be upgraded. Um, so go through level one and just kind of using the normal ground loot weapons for your alternate weapon and wait until you basically get to the end of world one before you use pack a punch and then pack a punch your other weapon besides the grenade launcher. We're going to try and not put a whole lot of resources into our uh, other grenade launcher or into our grenade launcher until we have enough to upgrade it to where we can actually complete the challenges. So um, we're going to be going to world three at least. Um, most likely four, so we want it to get at least two pack a punches on our, you know, secondary weapon um, to get us to have it as a decent level at world three. Um, but as soon as you have fifteen hundred regular salvage, uh, I would recommend going ahead and upgrading your uh, grenade launcher to rare, uh, rare rarity. <laughs> Um, simply because you can encounter in the world uh, ether tools. Now that they've been added in Season 3, they can drop from chests or crystals, and you will definitely get them if you do a crystal world objective. 
Um, here I spent my salvage to upgrade that to rare and then immediately a rare <laughs> grenade launcher drop from a box. I wouldn't count on, on a grenade launcher dropping for you. That's why I recommend it as a loadout weapon. Um, but yeah, you want to make sure um, that as soon as you have the 1500 salvage that you need, that you take your grenade launcher up to rare level. Um, and the reason why is because if you encounter an aether tool, you want to use that to upgrade to epic level because if you use the ether tool to upgrade you to either common or rare, then you are really wasting it and you will have to grind the rare salvage to get level three on your grenade launcher, which I do not recommend. So, um, so again, my main recommendation is for whatever your secondary weapon is that you pick up, pack a punch it twice. Um, that $20,000 is gonna be kind of, you know, not a big deal once you get far enough to actually have enough salvage to get your grenade launcher up to um, epic uh, upgrade so so make sure that you're prioritizing that just so that you don't get killed and then once you're ready to take that up to epic you can do that now when I say a little bit of luck is involved in this ideally when you get to world 3 what you will hopefully encounter is a crystal objective and what that will do, that's a new one that's been one of the world events that's been added in the new season. And when you encounter it, uh, like you do here, you'll see on the map it's the little d diamond with a crystal in it and it's these flaming crystals. You have to go and destroy all of these crystals in a small amount of time. So kind of be prepared, uh, clear the area before you shoot the first crystal because then you will have a short amount of time to find all of the crystals. Um, I recommend using headphones. Uh, if they're available, if not, turn your volume up so that you can hear where the crystals are. That's the easiest way to locate them. Um, but they're in a relatively small area, so you don't have to go too far to find them. Um, but the time limit on them is short. I don't know exactly what it is, but I would probably say it's less than, probably two minutes or less. Um, and if you get this objective, when it is completed, it will drop an ether tool, which will, whatever weapon you have in your hand at the time, will be upgraded to the next rarity level. Um, when you pick it up. So make sure when you pick up that ether tool that the weapon in your hand is your grenade launcher and that your grenade launcher is going to be up upgraded to at least epic rarity. So so if you had get this objective, do not start the objective. Do not begin this objective at all until you have upgraded your grenade launcher with 1500 normal salvage to at least um, rare blue level. That way, when this ether tool drops, and as you'll see here, I'm already at blue, so when I pick it up, instead of having to get 500 rare salvage, I now have a epic um, grenade launcher, which means that when it kills, uh, when I kill anything with it, it will count towards a ballistic knife, as you can see here. And then all I have to do now is go pack a punch it twice, which I already have $25,000 again after pack a punching my primary weapon twice. I can immediately go and put two pack-a-punches on this, and now, if I if this was the first time I was doing this and I hadn't crashed out of multiple games before, now all I would need to do is complete these challenges with this grenade launcher. So I would kill 300 of any enemy with this grenade launcher, which honestly, going around and just murdering zombies with the grenade launcher is a is a boat ton of fun. Um, I tried messing around with a multiplayer. Uh, challenge for this after I had those zombie freezes where for the ballistic knife it's get one melee kill and one uh, one shot one kill metal in a single life in 15 different games which is just as horrible and painful a grind as it sounds and I, I just wouldn't recommend it this once you do the leg work which you're already playing zombies so it's already fun um, once you get this upgraded then you just get to go around blowing up zombies until you kill 300 of them and Make sure you go and hunt down uh, specials. Uh, as you can see on the radar, the uh, you know they change the icon slightly, but where the little you know devil horn skull thing shows up, uh, prioritize hunting those down on the map because those are counting towards your crossbow challenge. Now that you're a pack punch level two, so you have to get, I believe it's 50 special kills, and 300 regular kills. So while you're hunting down those 50 specials, you will. Oh, certainly encounter the 300 normal enemies that you need to get these challenges completed. Uh, and I had already had dead wire on my shotgun, so I put I managed to get dead wire on my grenade launcher too, which was interesting and fun. Um, 
Now, the reason I say you'll most likely have to go to level four here, I was checking my challenges. Um, uh, you can go into the create a class during the game to check your progress, um, which is a good tip to know, just so you can make sure that you're not wasting your time, make sure you're getting progress. Um, but it will get to the point, as I ran into here, where they're either rare or impossible to find specials. After a certain point, you've basically completed all the objectives on the map, you've killed all of the specials, and more, as far as I'm aware, I drove around for a while, won't necessarily just continue spawning, so you will probably have to move to World 4 um, to to continue killing specials. Um, you can obviously uh, very easily continue grinding zombies to get the 300 you need. And if you're only after the ballistic knife, then you won't have to worry about that piece. But um, you will have to probably go to World 4 to grind more specials. Um, and in that case, you will probably want, um, well, you will almost certainly want a third pack a punch on your grenade launcher just to make it more viable uh, for killing at that level. Um, and with all the zombies that you're killing and doing the objectives and stuff like that, really shouldn't be uh, a huge issue to get the extra $30,000 you need to rank up to the pack a punch level three for your grenade launcher. Um, and of course, still doable with level two. It's just gonna take you more shots. Um, as I was up here, <laughs> basically just lobbing mortars at enemies with my grenade launcher. There I go, I unlocked the ballistic knife. Um, so now all I had left to do was essentially the specials. So ballistic knife was done, now all I need to care about, I don't need to care about killing random zombies, all I need to do uh, is find specials. So um, in this map, I grabbed a motorcycle, drove around, killed every special I could find, and then realized I wasn't really gonna find any more or it was gonna take ages to find more if they do respawn. So I decided to warp to level four, drop that pack a punch uh, on my grenade launcher, moved up to world four, and uh, I believe uh, after I killed this first guy, just to see, okay, with a level three pack a punch, what's it going to take to kill a mangler? Um, a direct hit there, and he got stunned by deadwire. So look, I'm looking at about one to two grenades for killing a special, um, like a mangler at this level, and I had at this point five more to go. So. Uh, I knew I was kind of home free, at least for the challenges. Um, I didn't even bother necessarily going through most of the world events here, so I basically just did the specials first. Here I managed to find two manglers next to each other. <laughs> There's a double, so that's two out of the five. Um, I did kind of experimentally figure out, I didn't check to confirm, but I don't believe this elite, I don't think this megaton counted towards killing specials which I figured when it would say specials on the description, but it might mean specials or better. But what it appears is that elites do not count. So Krasnys and Megatons don't seem to count towards this. So you don't necessarily need to waste your time on them. Um, I killed them here. Like I said, like I showed you before, I had four that I had to, or five more that I had to kill. I killed those two Manglers. I kill this Megaton. And then you'll see I go on and kill two more Manglers and then a Tempest. And that's when it unlocks. So this... I didn't check after the Megaton to confirm that it didn't count, but I'm suspecting that that's what it was because the Tempests and the um, Manglers are definitely specials. <laughs> so um, so that's just kind of like the, the tips I have for you. This, like I said, I already had some of it done, but uh, going through all the way up to level four and doing all of this in this run took me probably a total of an hour and 45 minutes. Um, so I would guess if you're starting from zero for the kills, the you know 50 specials and 300 normal kills, that it may take you two, two and a half hours um, once you kind of get to world four and just go around killing more zombies. So not the end of the world versus 15 matches. And again, with Cold War, you can't like complete the challenge in one match and then leave the game and join another one because that will appear on the UI to count your progress, but you will not get the unlock. <laughs> And when you restart the game, it will reset your progress. You have to complete the multiplayer games, as I just finished the crossbow unlock there. Um, you have to complete the multiplayer games to do it. So you're talking about, let's call a game uh, in multiplayer 10 minutes. You know, you're talking 150 minutes. So you're looking at about the same amount of time spent in the game in zombies versus multiplayer. And I can attest, after trying it for a couple of games, that trying to get a melee kill and a one-shot, one-hit kill in a single life is a pain in the ass on its own, much less trying to rinse and repeat for 15 different games that you then have to finish after you're done. So this is what I would recommend. The zombie is way more fun. If the game doesn't crash on you, this is a breeze. 
This probably in total took me about four or five hours because of the crashes and just the amount of time it takes to, to grind up the grenade launcher to the level that was necessary. Um, but again, I still found that preferable to getting in Cold War multiplayer, trying Nuketown or Nuketown Hardcore or any of those kind of go-tos for grinding stuff. Playing zombies didn't feel like a grind. I got to go and kill zombies and blow zombies up and shotgun zombies in the face for a couple of hours. And I got the unlocks. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Hopefully this is a more enjoyable way for you to do that and you'll be able to take advantage of it. If you found this information helpful, share it, like it. Uh, if you didn't like this, if you thought maybe I didn't do a good job of giving you guys advice on how to unlock your ballistic knife, I mean, you can dislike this and, and it won't hurt my feelings too bad. But I understand. <laughs> Subscribe for more videos like this and more fun. Uh, and I will, uh, I will continue to put out as many helpful videos as I can, as well as random good times like me playing zombies with uh, my son Sebastian. So be sure to stick around. Uh, and minions, I love you. I will talk to you later. Goodbye.